Hey, writers, and welcome back to the One Minute Writing Tip Podcast. I am so excited to be here with you today. I am interviewing another author guest. I'm speaking to Troy Lambert. Troy is a freelance writer, author, editor, and the education lead for Plotter, which is an amazing platform that we'll be talking about more in the interview. He is the author of over 25 novels. He lives, works, and plays in the mountains of Idaho with his wife and two very talented dogs, which I would love to hear more about. Uh, Troy, thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited to have you on the podcast. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate that. Yeah. So will you just start us off by sharing about your own personal writing and publishing journey? Um, so I, I always wanted to be a writer from the time I was very young. Um, when I was 14, I knew I wanted to be a full-time writer, but, um, of course, all the experts around me, my school counselors and all of those people told me it couldn't be done, um, that it just wasn't a way to make a living. Um, and being young and naive as I was, I believed them. And so I tell people I wasted 30 years of what I call hairnets and name tags and various careers until I reached a point where I was like, I got to figure this writing thing out, or I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. And um, what I mean, the result was that in 2009, really, I started working full time as a writer um, in various capacities, freelance fiction, all those kind of things. Um, and really, my timing was pretty good because of the um, indie author movement and because of some freelance stuff that happened um, to me, which worked out extremely well. And uh, that basically got me to where I am today. Um, I've I've the further I get in my journey, the faster I write and the more ideas and stuff I have to write. So, mm. Wow. I can so relate to several aspects of your journey for sure. Like, you know, having that dream as a young person and then other people kind of pushing it off and being like, yeah, you kind of have to be lucky or, you know, that's not a dream for little people like us, you know, and then at some point being like, wait a second, screw what those people are saying, you know, this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm, you it's almost feel like a calling and you're just like, I got to figure this out. And I, I totally relate to that. Um, so how did you actually like transition to writing full time? Like, was it a journey for you or just your first book was just a huge success? Like, was it a process? How did that actually end up happening for you? It, it was kind of a process and it's, it's, it's always kind of an ongoing process. Um, like throughout the years, like I've taken part-time jobs for the benefits. Like I worked for Apple for a while because I wanted insurance for free, hopefully. And, you know, so that was, that was right. what I was hoping for. Yeah. Um, so, you know, different things like that, but um, it was more of a journey. And I think it is for everyone. It, it gets to the moment where you have to decide, am I going to take this leap of faith or am I going to keep working? Like, um, when it was starting to cost me money to go to work, you know, where I felt like if I could write more, if I could work harder, I wouldn't have to go to work. Um, then that was kind of the tipping point for me. And that really came in two parts. First of all, my first novel was very commercially successful, which I tell people was actually a bad thing. Um, because then when I released my second novel, I thought the world was just waiting for my second novel. So all that marketing stuff I did initially, ah, there's no need for that, um, which didn't work out exceptionally well. Um, but the other part was that I got a freelance, I got some freelance writing things. I was working at a museum and I essentially founded a research department and we did research for the federal government. <clears throat> and it taught me a couple of very important things. First of all, how to write to a deadline. Um, you know, they, I, there were definite deadlines, right? And it was, it was a lot of technical writing. But what it also taught me was that Writing was an actual skill. I mean, I'd always known this to an extent. Like there's a certain amount of talent, a certain amount of skill that goes into it. But I always knew that it was a skill, but I didn't understand that there were like people I was working with who had master's degrees, doctorates, stuff like that, and couldn't write. Like they couldn't write. And I was like, I don't understand this. Um, and it, it eventually just dawned on me. This is a skill. This is a talent. And my words have value. They mm. had their worth money. Um, and that really enabled me to take a different approach to writing that I had always before um, been kind of fearful of like, how am I going to make money at this? And is this actually, am I actually going to get paid at some point? Um, mm. And that just developed a lot of that confidence. And it was super, super powerful for me. Mm. Yeah, no, I love what you said about how it, it was that process, but you reached that tipping point and you really started understanding that your words have value 
because I think you have a great point there. Like there's this, this kind of myth that you're supposed to go and get like a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in writing. And then the people are graduating and they're like, okay, now what do I do? And they have no book to show for it. They have no publishing contracts. Like, and then they're still having to go out and figure out how do I actually become an author? How do I actually, you know, become a freelance writer? How do I actually monetize this and earn my investment back from my degree? When instead, like, I feel like, especially in the writing world, I mean, there are some careers that you need to have that degree, but in the writing world, I feel like it's more of a, you learn by fire kind of thing. Like you have to get in there and you have to learn and you have to grow and you have to accept the feedback from people and, you know, continue to develop that skill. It's something you can't learn in a classroom. Like you just can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah. sometimes I say a degree is even more harmful in some ways because most bachelors in the MFA program where they miss is they don't teach you anything about publishing and the industry mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. business of writing. It's all about craft. And I'm like, you can be as good or not good at your craft as you want to be. But if you don't know how to sell a book, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't make any difference. So I'm like, you have to learn that business side of publishing and writing. Otherwise, any degree that you get regardless is worthless. And also, there are a lot easier and cheaper ways to learn more about your craft than to spend four years in college. But... Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I agree. Um, it, it's just like this kind of weird and like kind of myth from, from way back when, when you had to go get a traditional publishing and all that. And the industry has just changed so much where we're in a world now that like, you have to be cutting edge. Like you have to develop your skill. You have to learn the business things. You have to learn the marketing and it doesn't have to be extraneous, but it has to be some, you know, you have to, right. you know, so yeah, a hundred percent. I'm with you there. Um, so talk to me about how you got involved with Plotter and talk to me about what that even is for our listeners. So, so first of all, so Plotter is a, what I call a visual story organization software, or even like you could call it a story management software, um, because essentially you can manage your series Bible, you can manage your outlines, you can manage any of your plan planning. Um, so I use Plotter to, to manage my planning my actual writing process integrated into my writing process and then the revision process specifically. Um, but it's very visual. So think of like a digital corkboard that you can move those note cards around on, um, but without a huge corkboard on your wall with all kinds of push pins and string mm. and the likelihood that my 95 pound German shepherd is going to knock it over and my novel planning is going to be gone or whatever <laughs> the case may be. Or if I had a whiteboard, I used to use whiteboards too. And I mean, I'm sure he would wipe it off with his tail and erase it, if, you know, and my, I would just be crying for a couple of days. Um, but anyway, so think of it as a digital kind of a digital cork board, but way more powerful so that you can tag things, you can sort things so that you can look at your story in various different ways. And what that allows you, what those different ways allow you to do is to spot plot holes before they happen. Um, plan your stories with a much better story structure to start with, or if you're more of a discovery writer, to use that um, story structure in the revision process to check your work and basically see how did I do? Did I write a reasonably good first draft that has a story structure? Or did I totally screw this up and I don't really have a story? Or I have extra scenes where I was telling myself the story and the reader doesn't necessarily need to read that. Um, so it, it's really just, um, and the other aspect of it is managing your characters and your, your settings in a series Bible um, that you can sort by the book that you're working on. So you only have to look at part of your series Bible based on what you're working on right now. But if something comes up and you want to remember, what, how did I describe that person in, you know, whatever, in book one, or what about the setting? You can always just uncheck the filter and look back at the book that you're, that you're working on currently. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, super, it's a super powerful tool that way. Um, and the way I became involved was essentially when it was a brand new baby software and didn't have near all the features it has now. Um, I bought it from the guy who created it. And then he said, oh, you're an author. He goes, um, what are some features you would want to see from the software? And I was like, well, since I got the ear of the developer, I've got some ideas. And so I, um, I, I gave him basically a list of a whole bunch of ideas, a whole bunch of things that I would like to see um, in the software. And as time went along, he created those things. And then we developed kind of a community and more and more people were having input 
Um, and then in 2020, when um, Plotter kind of relaunched with a new marketing message and a whole bunch of stuff like that, and they basically said, hey, you, you're already kind of an ambassador for Plotter. Do you want to come on board and work for us? And I said, oh, sure. You know, what do I need to do? And they're like, yeah, do you need to just talk to writers and tell them about our software? I'm like, I can probably do that. So I do all kinds of things like this, podcasts or webinars or workshops, um, tons and tons of things like that to basically teach people how do you use Plotter and like, how do you integrate it into your writing process and make it the powerful tool it can be? Mm. Yeah, no, it sounds amazing. And I, one of the big things that I advocate for is actually doing some kind of foundational work before you just start writing, because I, I've talked to so many writers who like have this amazing idea, but either they're overwhelmed because it just feels so big and they can't figure out how to streamline it into one flow or they, you know, just dive right in and start going for it because they feel really excited and inspired. And then the steam starts running out and they're like, uh, now what do I do? You know, do I backtrack and restart or, and I'm sure you've experienced that in your own writing process. So it sounds like it's definitely a, a worthwhile tool. Um, and I love what you shared about it being kind of a digital cork board, um, because in my case, anytime I have handwritten outlines, my children inevitably either spill coffee on them or draw all over them because mine are little. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I love what you shared there. Uh, yeah, so so speaking about this amazing tool that writers can use and how it really helps you in those uh, critical elements of planning out your book and setting that foundation in place, and then also what you are sharing with your own writing journey, um, what would be your top pieces of advice for aspiring authors who are in that same place I just described? They're overwhelmed, they want to pursue this dream, but they're still held back by all those fears and self-doubts. What would be your advice to them to just go for it well so there's a few things the first the first thing probably one of the first things is what we touched on before is that there's a certain amount of education that's involved with becoming a writer um and again i don't mean college in fact most of the time i really don't mean college like sincerely don't go out and get a college degree but what i mean by that is that you need to understand not only your craft and story structure and things like that but the business of writing so start both of those things when you start your journey now Initially, start small, like start with what you need right now and learn and grow. There's a reason those of us that are experienced writers don't go back and read our first novels, right? Yuck, who was that person who wrote that novel? I don't know them anymore, right? I'm a much different person, a much better writer now. Now, part of that is because I had to understand like story structure. I had to become better at this planning process. I used to be a straight discovery writer. I'd sit down with an idea and I'd just write, but it didn't work. Like about a third or two thirds of the way through the book, I'd need to know how does this end in order to plan my, you know, in order for me to finish it faster and to actually finish it. I mean, I know there are people out there that have unfinished novels that are like, because and it's because they don't know where they're going, right? Mm-hmm. They get stuck somewhere. They don't know where they're going and they don't know how to get out of that situation. So planning and understanding story structure is a big help for that. Um, and a big part of that is analyze your um, favorite stories, no matter what those are, television shows, whatever the case may be, analyze those and understand the story structure and why that worked. And then take something that you didn't like, the book you didn't finish, the series you didn't finish on TV, and dissect it and pull it apart and figure out why it didn't work. Like, why did this not work? Where was the author, did the author make a mistake? And how can I avoid that in my own writing? And then just read, 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 study, study, study. Um, The other thing that I tell people is to be sure you network with other writers. This can feel like a very solitary career, right? And it is at times. But if you network with other people, you first of all realize that you're not alone. Second of all, you can always learn something um, from those people. And then probably one of the last things is get the tools that you need. Um, And by that, I don't mean necessarily specific software. Now, of course, I'm going to tell you, I use Scrivener and I use Plotter and I have a process that involves both of those pieces of software that for me makes me very efficient, makes me a very fast writer um, and helps me to do a better job with my stories. You are welcome to imitate my method. However, it may not work for you, but you are going to need some tools. You're going to need some software. You're going to need some books. You're going to need some education. You might need some a big pile of notebooks that are too pretty to write in. 
um, like all of us writers have, right. yep, um, yep. <laughs> beautiful pens that you never use, you know, all those different things, right? But you need tools. You need tools to equip yourself um, to properly become a writer. And anymore, that doesn't mean an IBM Selector typewriter um, or the Royal that my grandfather passed down to me. That means you need to create yourself with a comfortable writing environment, usually a computer that you like, whatever your preference happens to be, and a comfortable environment, a comfortable place um, in your house. And then set yourself a writing schedule and keep it. Set those like you would a doctor appointment. You have a writing appointment or a plotting appointment. I'm planning this novel today, and you sit down for an hour and you plan that novel. And you tell your friends and your family and everybody, this is busy on my calendar, leave me alone. And protect mm -hmm. that time jealously um, because even if you become a full-time writer that time will still be something that people want to take from you um, you will still have life you will still have children you will still have involvement you will still have spouses you will still have dogs who want to be walked all those different things so you will still encounter those obstacles so protect that time jealously mm. yeah i i agree totally with everything that you were saying um from my own experience and, and yeah, you know, it's so important to make sure that you take the time that you need to really develop that skill and that you, you know, take the steps to that process and that you discover the process is going to work for you. I love that you said, you know, someone can try to imitate your process, but it's not going to be the same result yeah. because each person has their own process and style that works best for them. And so it's, it's important to take the time and learn what that is for yourself. And then step into that and be confident in that, because I think a lot of writers, especially starting out, you know, they look at what everybody else is doing and they're like, maybe I can take a little here, a little there, you know, and try to put it all into a mixing pot. And, and then they're like, why is it not working? And it's like, well, because you can't put everything in a box. Like a creative process is not a box. It's, it's like a, uh, oh, I can't remember the right word, but, but you know, like a, a kaleidoscope of things. It's, it's, it's your mm -hmm. own beautiful mosaic, the mosaic. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. It's like, it's like a mosaic that you are personally developing for yourself and your own writing and, you know, your stories and all of that. So yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously you use plotter uh, and that's a huge part of your process. So what can our listeners who want to explore this and are like, that sounds great for me. I need something like that. What can they expect by getting the software and, um, and tell me a little bit more about like their journey and actually signing up and downloading it and all of that? Like what, what can they expect? So obviously first step is go to plotter.com. Um, there's a couple different options. We have a free trial or we have like a, a 30 day money back guarantee. And so what I tell people is start simple, start with a one device uh, license for whatever device that you happen to use. Unless you happen to already know that I'm going to use three different devices for outlining and plotting. I use my iPad, my computer, whatever the case may be, right? Start simple. Um, with something because you can always upgrade from there. So start simple, start with the free trial, start with the early um, type of software and just start with the things that you need to create your outline right now. So first of all, just go into the software and start playing around with it. We have tons of tutorials on YouTube, tons of documentation that teaches you different things about the software um, and how to use it and how to get started and how different people get started with it. Um, so just start with the simple things with Plotter and work your way to more advanced things. Um, I always tell people a couple different things. The first one is just because a feature is there doesn't mean you have to use it. If it enhances your writing process, Plotter is a writing tool, right? The object of the tool is to get you writing. I tell people all the time, if you create a beautiful Plotter file, I love that. Those make me really happy, right? But that's not the point. What makes me happier is for you to show me your beautiful Plotter file and your finished first draft that you made using that plotter file. Mm -hmm. The idea is to get your first draft done. This is a writing tool, it's not the end, it's the beginning of the process. Or a, it, if you do it like me, you're, it can be a part of your process throughout the whole writing, the whole of your writing process, okay? Um, uh, the other aspect of getting started with things is I tell people, this is what's going to happen, is you can imitate other people's process. But if you look at some of our videos on YouTube, there's a series called Thursdays with Troy where I interview other authors about how they use Plotter. The most two, two most important words you're going to hear in those interviews are the words, and then. The person says, I started with this part of Plotter or with this story structure or with this method, and then. 
the and then is when they personalized it and made it work for them. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people all the time, your most important thing you can do is find your own and then. Find your and then. How are you going to take this tool and integrate it into your process? And that's the most important part of the le that learning process is finding that personalization and how you're going to use this tool to enhance your own writing process in your own career. Mm. Yeah, I, I love that. And again, it ties into people having to find the, the one thing that's going to work for them in their own process. So that's amazing that the tool is something that you can use and integrate into your own process. And it really can help you figure out what that is and master that process too. So, um, so talk to me a little bit more about your own books and how people can connect with you and, um, you know, if they want to check out your books or if they want to check out Plotter, you know, talk to me about that and how they can do that. All right. So, um, so my books can be found at TroyLambertWrites.com or they can be found on Amazon or wherever, wherever you find books. Um, I just tell people, if you Google me and I don't come up and your internet is down and you need to contact your provider and then that'll all resolve itself. Um, so so um, you can find my books everywhere. My latest is titled Teaching Moments. Um, my latest that's under my name is titled Teaching Moments. Um, and it's a serial killer thriller, um, kind of has a dual plot that happens simultaneously and you don't know how the two connect until the very end of the book. Um, and you'll probably, even if you think you have it figured out, you'll, you're probably wrong. Um, but anyway, so I, I love that book. It was one of my favorite books to write. It was a very complex plot. Um, and so obviously the plotter played a huge role in, in me even being able to complete that book. Um, and then I'm not launching a new series at the beginning of the year that's a mashup between romantic comedy and um, crime and thriller. And um, it's about serial killers who fall in love. And I'm writing that series with another author. It's going to be super, super fun and super, super funny. Um, goes along with some romantic comedies I've written under a pen name. So um, so you can, anyway, you can find my books. You can find me anywhere um, pretty easily. Um, same thing with Plotter. Like, we've been all over the place. I tell people, go to our website, but also just go to our YouTube channel. Um, our YouTube channel has just tons and tons of resources. If you have a question, you can figure it out there. And we also have a really robust group on Facebook. Um, so if you go into that group and you ask a question, the likelihood is somebody in that group is going to have an answer to that question. And that person might be me. I hang out in that group a lot. So if you have a specific question for me, you can actually go in that group and just tag me. Um, and I will show up eventually and answer your question, um, usually in a fairly reasonable amount of time. Um, but there, so there's tons of resources that surround Plotter. So Plotter, if you Google Plotter, uh, P-L-O-T-T-R is, is how it's spelled. Um, or if you just go to plotter.com, um, you'll find all those different resources. But yeah, check us out on YouTube. Check us out on all the socials. Facebook group is super, super, super active. Um, and it, again, if you chase me down, you will see Plotter next to me quite a bit. So yeah. Yeah, I can imagine <laughs> that being the case. <laughs> and, I, and I love what you shared about your uh, your novels too. It sounds like a lot of fun and something different. Um, I feel like there is a micro niche for like every genre in today's industry. So that's super cool. Um, so for all my listeners, if you want to really have a tool to help you with accomplishing the foundational elements of your book and really set you up for success in writing your manuscript, do check out Plotter. And of course, don't forget to check out Troy and his novels. And I will include his details as well as the link for Plotter in the description for you guys. Troy, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. It was really great to have you. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So for all my listeners, thank you also for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a review wherever you're listening from. And I will see you guys on the next one.